Hello, and welcome to my channel, where I mostly share my love of fragrance and enjoying my collection. In this video, I'll be reviewing Jo Malone's 2023 Roses Collection. Thank you so much for stopping by, and let's get started. Happy New Year, everyone. I'm starting out the year with a review of the 2023 Jo Malone Spring Collection. In 2022, Jo Malone released the Celebrating the Rose Collection, which included Red Roses, Velvet Rose and Oud, Rose Magnolia, and Rose Blush. I reviewed that entire collection, and will link the video in the description box if you want to check that out. For 2023, they released the Celebrating the Rose Collection again, which also contains Red Roses and Rose Blush from last year, but this time adds Rose Water and Vanilla. Last year, the collection launched in January, but this time it launched a little earlier in late December, first at Sephora and then other retailers. Since I already had Red Roses and Rose Blush from last year, only Rose Water and Vanilla is new to me. This year, the perfumes only seem to come in 1.7 ounce bottles, and I actually prefer that size from Jo Malone. This year's bottles have the usual Jo Malone label, only in varying shades of pink. And I have to say, I do prefer the design of last year's packaging, with the script instead of the label, and I of course love the bows. It's a bit hard to see the script on camera, but it's really pretty in person. The packaging for Rose Water and Vanilla included a nice pink bow, and I was really intrigued by the description, which says, A gourmand floral fragrance inspired by a delightful rose treat. Delectable, gourmand, creamy. And in this year's collection, Rose Water and Vanilla comes in the bottle with the purpley pink label. And this has top notes of Neroli and Pettigrain, a mid note of Turkish Delight, also known as Lokum, and base notes of Vanilla, Patchouli, and Musk. And this was originally released in 2010 as a Cologne Intense, and I don't know if it's been back since, but I've never seen it for sale before now. The 1.7 ounce bottle is $110 US, and I wanted to mention that this sold out the first day on Sephora and the next day on Jo Malone's website, so this seems to be the most popular scent in the collection. It did restock on Sephora, but already sold out again, so you may want to pick this one up soon if you're interested in it. And I find this perfume very interesting. When it opens, it has a sharpness that can be attributed to the Neroli and Pettigrain, but it's not very citrusy, it's more green. It also has a hint of rose water, as well as a lot of underlying powderiness. As it dries, the sharpness softens, and what Jo Malone refers to as the Turkish Delight note comes in. And the fragrance gets sweeter and even more powdery, and smells a lot like candy. And the candy note isn't sugary or syrupy, it's more powdery sweet. And if you're not familiar with Turkish Delight, also known as Lokum, it's a type of confection made with a gel comprised of starch and sugar, and apparently the most popular flavor is rose, and it's made with rose water, so that appears to be where the inspiration for this fragrance came from. I've never personally had Turkish Delight, so I'm not sure what it smells like, but this doesn't have the sugariness of cotton candy. It's more like a dusting of powdered sugar, but the sweetness is tempered by the other ingredients that remind me of the more gelatin part of the dessert and it also has an airiness to it. The vanilla note comes out over time, and it isn't raw or syrupy. It's more creamy, powdery vanilla candy. I don't really smell the patchouli, but I think that the dry down has a sort of fresh and somewhat laundry-like cleanness to it without being soapy. And overall, I find this to be a very sweet, soft, fluffy cloud of powdered sugar and vanilla with the barest hint of rose water. Note that neither rose nor rose water are actually in the fragrance notes, and the rose water in here is very subtle and gives way for the powdery confection. If you're looking for a rose dominant fragrance, this is definitely not it, as the rose in here is pretty subtle and fleeting, so this could be a nice option for those who normally find rose scents too heavy. And I find this scent to be pretty strong. On my first test, I used three sprays, and it was too much. I felt like I was breathing in a super sweet powdery cloud, so I think overspraying will make the scent too cloying. After three to four hours, the sweetness wasn't quite so strong. It had turned more creamy and warm, and had developed a sort of caramel or praline-like quality, as if the sugar had slowly melted from the warmth of my skin. And I actually thought that this was the most beautiful part of the fragrance. And the scent was still present eight hours later, though much closer to the skin. 
I think that rose water and vanilla is very unique in my collection, as I can't think of anything that smells quite like it. I really do like the fragrance, and I'm excited to wear it some more. And I also want to try pairing it with some heavier rose or oud scents, as I think that could make for a beautiful combination. Next up is Rose Blush, which was originally released in 2021. And I have the 1.7 ounce bottle from last year's collection, but I'll show what this year's bottle looks like. And this has top notes of lychee and basil, a mid note of pink rose, and a base note of white musk. And I was initially wary of the basil in the scent as I don't care for herbal notes, but upon first spray, I was pleasantly surprised by the brightness. It opens with a sharp combination of rose and lychee, with the rose being more prominent, and there's not much sweetness at this point. There's a very fresh green feeling to it, and that may be from the basil, but it doesn't smell overly herbal, and the rose continues to stand out the most. And to me, the rose feels fresh and not jammy. And as it dries, it softens quite a bit, and the green note has faded. And the rose is left with a bit of lychee and a subtle sweetness, and at this point, it's very soft and pretty. It feels fresh and light, and it fits into the collection well, as it is predominantly a rose fragrance. And the dry down is my favorite part of the scent, as I'm left with a sweet, fresh, fruity floral with a little woody muskiness. And the last scent is Red Roses, which was released in 2001 and is part of the core Jo Malone line. I have the limited edition one ounce bottle from last year's Roses collection, but I'll show you what this year's bottle looks like. And this has top notes of violet leaves and lemon, mid notes of a variety of roses, including Bulgarian, Turkish, Damask, May, and French, and a base note of honeycomb. And this is a very linear scent that smells like pure fresh cut roses, like you're sitting in a rose garden. So there is some greenness here as well. And there's also a bit of bright citrus from the lemon. And previous versions have mentioned a mint note, but that's not listed anymore. And luckily I don't get much mint because I don't care for that in my fragrances. There's a hint of honeyed sweetness in the dry down, but I wouldn't call this a sweet scent. It's very much a pure floral that smells like holding a bouquet of fresh cut roses. And I personally don't prefer to wear this on its own. I plan to mix it with other sweet or spicy scents that I think will complement the very realistic rose. Overall, I really enjoy Jo Malone's rose collections. To sum up, these are all very different fragrances. Red Roses is a classic, pure, fresh cut rose scent and would be great for layering with other perfumes. Rose Blush is a fruity, subtly sweet rose. It's fresh and light and perfect for daytime wear. And Rose Water and Vanilla is a candied, powdery vanilla with the barest whisper of rose water. It's sweet and pretty and feminine. I really love Jo Malone's rose fragrances, and I definitely want to try to wear them more as I didn't get much use out of my 2022 versions yet. So that's it for my review of the 2023 Jo Malone Celebrating the Rose Collection. Let me know what you think of these fragrances and which ones you're interested in trying. Thank you for watching. I hope that you'll subscribe and I'll see you in my next video.